<laughs> Ladies and gents, welcome to the smallest hideout ever. 36 tiles by 36 tiles. We've now done this with four other maps, or five technically, if you include Force Nothing. And hideout, normally players share a wood line, and then they have a base of palisade walls. And so here it is. Um, and this might actually be the longest one we've seen yet. And let's see exactly how this plays out. We've got Aramku in the red, playing as the Koreans. And I was thinking we could see towers. And then in the blue, we've got John Slow, playing as the Spanish, who I also think we could see towers from. But you could see that they can access each other on the sides. So it might actually make sense to just wall that up. And that's what John Slow is going to do. And he's going to walk pretty far forward here as well. I think you want to wall as far forward as you can. Aremku hasn't really scouted the sides here. He can see this and this alone. And he's already trying to push in deer. But that's a that's a thing that's been consistent for him. Because he loves to go for the fast uptimes. What are you doing, John Slow? You, you get a wall down here, you're great. What are you doing to yourself here? Okay, well, you know, typical John Slow. He has the idea and then he just takes it one step further than it needs to go. That's going to be a Deadville. So maybe not quite as sneaky as he needed to be there. And Aremku is blocking. I mean, Aremku did sacrifice three villager idle time for that, but that's still a villager kill. That's not bad. And we see a wall there. Could be a wall further forward. Not seeing the wall further forward. Jonso doesn't know that. Jonso may be concerned about that. And he's simply just going to wall there. On this side, however, we do have that wall, which is quite nice. Aremku could always break through it, and Aremku actually sees it. So, a couple of things I picked up on here. Uh, as John Snow now runs into the opponent's TC. Bro, your opponent had the weaker scout. I love this guy so much. Um, so, Aremku, he is not going to be able to drop a castle on the middle area, right? So, you look at John Slow's map. If he wants to go for a castle, he could conveniently drop it here, which could actually range the town center eventually for Aremku. So, the way this map gen is situated, I think, is better for John Slow. Jonso is, however, going to chop the middle wood. Um, and so, I mean, maybe Aremku could just tower that or something. We'll end up finding out. Uh, so the golden stone's on the back again for Jonso. You've got two tiles of stone, which is enough to get to a castle. And you've got quite a few tiles of gold. And then you've got a neutral golds and stones around the sides uh, to take advantage of here. Now for this series, this fun little series, and shout out to these two players for volunteering to play this madness. Uh, it is 2-2, so it adds a little bit of extra flavor to the series here. And John Slow will see that the gates have been deleted there by Aramku. And Aramku's going to make a lumber camp there as well. So, at least from what I'm seeing now, Aramku, even though he lost a villager, though, and is about to get housed again, I think he's going to have the faster feudal because he's prioritized food faster. Also kind of like how he just deleted his wall and is adding houses there. But this is tiny hideouts. Spanish villagers build faster, so if it's ever a tower war or castle war, Spanish should win there. But Koreans get their tower upgrades for free, and they also mine stone a bit faster. Which could be really helpful. Aremku can see that it's walled here. He now sees this scout, and I think what you want to do is you actually want to wall below the villager when you attack here, so the scout can't run. Okay, well, never mind. You, you probably just killed the scout now. Jonso will have the hill, but he's got too little HP. Now Jonso's scout is dead. And, oh, wait a second. Rewalling it, bringing another vill. And Aremku sees that vill. What will that prompt him to do? I think John So may, may just want to wall. <laughs> okay, he just wants to wall even further forward. So I, I think the forward walls is a really important part of this game here. Um, again, similar to Black Forest, but you've got different choke points, right? The mill over here makes sense too for the deer. There's no sense in making a mill next to your berries when they're right on your town center. Can someone tell me how long the first game was, game time-wise? Uh, not the first game, I'm sorry. Um, well, that might be useful as well, but the previous game is what I meant to say. Because that was one of the longest ones. We've had 
two or maybe three of these games be sub 20 minutes because you know one of the players just they're so aggressive I think if John so sees this, he needs to send another villager here to rewall it. This is why you frequently don't see a wall that forward work out. Because you're going to end up having to wall back here anyways. It's not a bad thing, but now you do have to be a little concerned that they're going to run through. I would have liked to see a wall there and then a wall here as well. So now, okay, he walls there. And John so hasn't clicked up the feud lage yet. It's just simply going to add another Palisade. That is a one-tile gap, and I think our Remku realizes there's no way I'm getting through there. So it's now just going to back away. I think the first thing we'll see our Remku do, though, is drop a tower here. I would like to see it right in this... What's he doing? Oh, is he trying to chop through to the enemy? I mean, there's another tree there, but I think he's going to drop the tower right where his villagers are standing. Because that's as far forward as you could possibly get here. He's made it to feudal. Okay, he drops it a bit further back from that. I mean, all this makes sense to me. And look at John Slow! He sneaks forward to rewall it. Really smart thinking. He also didn't really build this palisade wall. So that could always be run through. This is why I didn't like the lumber camp in the middle from John Slow. I feel like the lumber camp here is obvious, but again, it's obvious for us. We're watching this, we're just scheming on strategy. These guys actually have to play it. And I'm sure it's just a different world. Race to Castle Age now? Race to a castle? Is that what we're seeing? Hmm. It could be really nice to have uh, a unique unit that only costs wood and gold on the map where you can't fit a lot of farms. The Conquistador for the Spanish is a really exciting unit. It's really strong. Uh, I think it's better than the War Wagon if, you know, we're fighting in similar numbers or whatever. But the fact it costs food could be tricky. All right, villagers headed this way for John Slow. Who still hasn't deleted these walls, by the way. It's kind of bothering me. I feel like it's not helping him at all. But he's going to bring the Vils this way and drop a tower here. So from what he can see, he can see the main golds. And, oh, God, he wants to wall this way, but this is... No, no, no. That Not built, fully building that palisade wall is such a mistake. John, so you got to wall further back now. No, that's not even going to work. That's not going to work. That's not going to work. That's not going to work. Okay. Gets it down. I never doubted. Not sure this tower accomplishes a lot, but if he makes another tower... This could be interesting. And, okay, now you have a Remku trying to rush it down, and John's so trying to wall it up. And he loses his tower foundation. Or did he delete it? I'm not sure. I actually need to go back because that's really important. Losing those resources would be painful here. And he didn't lose the resources. He deleted it. Wait, no. He did lose the resources. Yep. So he just lost 125 stone. But he does get a wall down. Aramku needs to be careful with these villagers. Jonso still could be a threat there. Aramku is still trying to threaten just the stone wall on that side. Okay, so Villager down for a Remku, who's trying to go castle. John Slow aiming for walls and towers. When have we seen this before? A Remku faster to the castle age. It feels like it's been the theme. He's just been able to stretch the limits of the game, get to the next stage faster every single game. Ooh, free guard tower could be pretty epic here. You know what else could be epic? Is if he could chop through. He's not that far away, actually. If he were to just send... Yeah, he's doing it! He's doing it! Not scripted content, by the way. Not scripted. I think that's why Jon Snow is making the tower as well. Because he knows how dangerous that is. He's like, I saw you chop that tree, bro. I'm not letting you in here. But, dude, John, I'm worried about Jon Slow here. Because he is never going to make it to Castle Age. And he can't exactly keep the Korean player off of stone right now. He, is, he can't keep the Korean player off of wood. And he will have more villagers working. And all that stuff is a eventual positive for him. But this is messy stuff. These villagers have been forgotten about. As he just focuses on this right now. Okay. So, again, guard tower upgrade will come in in 90 seconds. So when our MQ is in the next stage. Which, to me, is a huge positive for him in winning this tower war. 
Um, he, he doesn't have a new lumber camp. So his villagers on wood are here. He's used the market quite a bit here. You know something I just thought of? Is that there's limited stone? Oh no, there's stone here and there's stone here. Okay, so he, he could always get to more towers or a castle. I was thinking maybe he could run out. The minimap's ridiculous. It's funny to see how fast things move on the minimap when they're moving normal speed here, and we just see forward walls for John Slow, which I feel is very important. I would actually love to see a tower here. If he thinks about it, yeah, that's that's amazing, actually. Because now I think you kind of deny the easy possibility for Aremku to be able to get a castle down. And Aremku is dropping a tower here because he wants to shoot these towers back with Guard Tower. So, Guard Tower's in. There's a big difference between Guard Tower and Watch Towers. Double the HP on a guard tower, plus a difference in attack. And John Slow might be feeling like he's out of options right now, but here at least he could maybe kill some Vils. Here our MQ isn't paying attention. Our MQ's got towers everywhere to deal with. Kind of stressing me out having to watch all these towers. I don't know about you guys. And another villager dies for a red player here in this game. And what do we think was going to happen when it was closed maps like this? We thought there'd be towers and castles. Jonslow sending more villagers so we could fill up both of his towers to maybe try and beat this one. More villagers are dying. Aremku isn't collecting any resources. His scout goes down. Oh, uh, Jonslow needs to repair this one. Huh. Repair? What died? I don't even know where the villagers are <laughs> dying right now. <laughs> okay, there's no more villagers there. So Aremku will win that tower war. Oh, he lost another one, though. Holy crap. And John Slow's like, I'm not finished yet. I don't care I'm in feudal age. I can have more stone than you. I think that's the strat. Garrison. Boom. Repair. Garrison. Boom. Run away. Oh, he's epic. He's actually doing such a good job on both sides. Oh, more villagers going down. They're so weak. No way. Look how weak all the vills are, man. I think this might be GG. And the GG's called. He didn't know what to do from here. He would have lost this tower to the double tower from John Slow. He would have lost this tower and obviously a couple of villagers if he ran away. He can't take wood anywhere because he's completely surrounded by feudal age towers. And the castle age doesn't pay off. I really thought the castle age would have paid off. John Slow just used numbers. And really committed towards the towers and the garrisons to win uh, our series here and also win tiny hideouts. So well played there. I really liked at the start how he focused on the walling on the sides. Um, and um, I think that paid off for him here, right? Because he was able to get this position for a tower because of his forward wall. He was able to get this position for a tower because of the forward wall. I believe that if he only had one of the sides walled forward... Aremku would have been fine because he could have easily taken wood and, and other golds. And he didn't have to force the issue as much. But he was very much in a position where he kind of had to do something crazy. Um, which is why it, it you know, looked suicidal at times as he just kept running villagers through. By the way, look at this villager just splatted. Just splatted. That is a very unique outline there. It looks like he just died to the tower and it's behind the TC. That is unique. That looks like a drawing. If you forget that's from Age of Empires 2 for a second, that looks like a drawing that maybe I drew when I was in, like, third grade. <laughs> Dude just splatted straight in his face. Or his back. I'm not really sure. Anyways, that was fun. Um, you know, there will probably be other things that we will experiment with with these tiny maps. I think it's fair to say that tower rushing... Uh, is is very strong. Um, and just like YOLOing in general is very strong. Probably not the most competitive settings. People are asking me to host a tiny map cup, which I will not do. But it's still pretty cool. And I hope people enjoy it. Um, the beauty of Age of Empires 2 is that there's a lot of different things you can do. And you can be creative with the map scripts and with the gameplay and with the civilization. So I felt like that uh, happened here for us. Very tiny map. GG.